My recent RPCS3 video has garnered much success on YouTube, but I started noticing an underlying theme while reading comments. Most of them were quite positive, but a few were bemoaning their performance and stability. And I think it's best to forget about this one. In my experience, the minimum requirements for RPCS3 is pointless, unless you want to play casual games like Geometry Wars or The Simpsons game. Some PS2 remasters like San Andreas and Resident Evil 4 can also run on low-end hardware. But if you want to do serious gaming, even six cores aren't really enough. I think eight cores are approaching playability for most games. And from what I've learned over time, RPCS3 becomes more stable the more cores and threads it can work with. But then the pertinent question should be, why isn't a quad core good enough for the emulator? I mean, you can run Forza Horizon 2 on a 10-year-old computer. I know that because I've done it, and not only does it run, it runs really good. Yet, with similar hardware on RPCS3, you'll get single-digit frames running Gran Turismo 5. At first, you may think that something doesn't compute here. However, recently, one of the RPCS3 developers uploaded a very revealing video. It was very technical, and 75% is unintelligible to non-coders. He briefly discussed the PS3's hardware specifications, which was admittedly more complex than the Xbox 360. The console used PowerPC architecture, which was standard at the time. But its SPU was the reason for the overall complexity and why RPCS3 development is so much harder. The SPU must be emulated entirely with LLE, otherwise RPCS3 loses accuracy. LLE is known to be more taxing on PC hardware, so that might explain why the emulator performs so poorly on older computers. But that's not the entire story. The last quarter of the video is where things get interesting though. Most importantly, CPUs with the AVX 512 instruction set are optimum for RPCS3. And after checking online, I discovered that Intel started implementing the code with their 10th gen Ice Lake CPUs. But then, after a few generations, they decided to discontinue AVX 512 for some reason, focusing instead on efficiency cores to make up for the deficit. The real problem is that the emulator has been optimized for AVX 512 and most computers don't have it. That's why performance has regressed for most people. I'm not blaming anybody for this. It's just an unintended outcome and the developers of RPCS3 can only embrace newer technology. They certainly can't be expected to roll back changes. But it is a dilemma since only a narrow band of CPUs can benefit from AVX 512 instructions. At least with AMD's new Zen 5 hardware, their CPUs will be able to execute 512 bit-wide AVX instructions in a single cycle. So it looks like RPCS3 will tailor itself on this new technology. And Intel is planning to re-implement a modified version of this instruction as well, called AVX10. So all is not lost. In the meantime, however, it may be best to find a 12th gen Intel i5 or i7 computer to emulate your favorite PS3 games. According to Wikipedia, that was the last mainstream generation with AVX 512 instructions. And if that's not possible, just get a PC with as many cores and as high of a clock speed as your budget will allow. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.